Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Happy Cocktail Friday, people. It is the weekend. It's felt like the weekend the last couple of days, so this is great. It's like a super extra long weekend. It is Friday, July 5th, 2019. As I mentioned, Cocktail Friday. But I'm sure that we were all doing a little bit of partying and celebrating yesterday for the 4th of July. I hope that you had a fantastic 4th and got to see lots of fireworks and eat lots of yummy food. We did. We had an amazing day. Saw lots of friends and went visiting and some visited us. And we spent some time with the neighbors who made us a yummy dinner. We have fireworks going off all around our neighborhood all night long. They were still going off very loudly over our heads when Joe and I went to bed at You know, we made it until 10 o'clock. I thought that was pretty good, especially being that we both had to get up at the same time as usual. But, um, yeah, it was a jam-packed day. So we both fell pretty, you know, hard to sleep until about the middle of the night when I got woken up by my husband saying, Babe, you're snoring really loud. Oh, okay. So I turned over, and I guess that fixed it. I know that he would only wake me up if it was like stopping him from getting back to sleep. So I apologize. I didn't mean to uh, snore so loudly. Loudly, This is why I love the fact that my husband has a breathing machine. Uh, even with that, he sometimes snores, um, and I'll give him a little shove or something. But it would be so much worse without it. And I'm like, you know what? We're good with the machine. We'll do what we need to do. Mama needs her sleep. So I wanted to talk a little bit about hot dog eating contests. We've all seen these. We've all heard about them. They have one every year, Nathan's, on the 4th of July. Joey Chestnut, I think we're all familiar with that name, too. He was the winner yet again. I believe this is the fourth year in a row for him and the 12th overall. 71 dogs in 10 minutes. I don't get food eating contests. They just don't make sense to me. First of all, I don't consider it a sport. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a technique to being able to, you know, eat 71 hot dogs in 10 minutes. But does that make it a sport? I don't know. I have a technique when it comes to, I don't know, let me pull something out of my, I have a technique when I get into my float in the water. Like, you know, walk down the steps backwards. I have the float already on my butt and then I let go of the ladder and I splash myself into the water that is a technique my friends is it considered a sport I think not anyway my point is I have never seen a hot dog eating contest in person that's okay I will pass now I did I did host a pie eating contest at an event when I was working for a particular radio station and you know this was nothing on the professional so-called level. This was just a bunch of people that signed up for it and just stuck their face in a pie and, you know, ate it till it was gone. That was pretty interesting. It was fun. But, yeah, who wants to eat a whole pie? Oh, my gosh. Gluttony, gluttony, gluttony. And I'm an eater. I love food. But a whole pie? And it's not like you get to enjoy it. You're just, like, you know, shoveling the food down. But, you know, to each his own. And like I said, Joey Chestnut, the winner again with 71 dogs in 10 minutes. Speaking of food, I saw something very interesting and funny on the news this morning. There are a couple of restaurants that are putting an item on the menu that is titled, My Girlfriend's Not Hungry, which is giving options like, extra fries and maybe a couple of extra wings to go along with your dish because, you know, the joke is all these guys take their girlfriends out for dinner or a snack or what have you, and they're like, oh, I'm not hungry. Um, I'm not going to get anything. And then they end up eating half his fries. So that's what this is referring to. My girlfriend's not hungry on the menu for an additional cost. 
and depending on the restaurant, because they mentioned about three of them throughout the country. Very cute idea. I think it's funny. I don't think that it's intended to be insulting or offensive. I see people getting up in arms about it. I think it's a little bit of a joke and kind of true. You know, a lot of girls do go out with guys, especially if it's a new relationship. Oh, I'm not hungry. I'm just going to have this small salad. I was never one of those girls. I'm like, oh, load me up. I'll have a steak, baked potato. I'll have it all. I'm eating. I've always had a very hefty appetite, unfortunately for me. So uh, keep a lookout for this my girlfriend's not hungry menu item. I'm sure they won't be around long because, like I said, people will get offended and be all up in arms about it. And they'll have to stop because, you know, we're not allowed to make jokes anymore. We're not allowed to have fun because somebody's always going to be insulted. Oh, my goodness. So, for today's blog post, I um, I have to say I am woefully unprepared for today's podcast I didn't, um, like I said, we were very busy yesterday, so I didn't spend the amount of time I typically spend looking for stories and, you know, this, that, and the other thing that I typically would do. I forgot to put a topic up, so I can't even talk about your responses to a topic that I had put up on the Facebook page because I didn't put a topic up on the Facebook page. But, you know, I think the hopefulist deserves a day off, too, once in a while, right? You wouldn't want me to be working hard while you're sitting back relaxing and having an adult beverage, would you? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about the real answers to that question. So for my blog post today, I did actually do that yesterday. Like I said, I like to have them done a little bit ahead of time so I can kind of, you know, let it sink into my brain and absorb it. I wanted to discuss today a little bit about fitness. Today's just a little bit of a preview of next week. And I'm going to get into the blog post in just a second, but I wanted to talk about this article that I just saw in USA Today. It says, uh, vaping juice cleanses fitness trackers, some healthy trends riskier than you think. I thought it would be a good article to discuss when I'm going to be talking a little bit about fitness and health. So I'm going to skip over the vaping part altogether because we know that vaping, we don't know too much about it. And um, I think that the uh, there could be some serious risks involved in vaping. So I'm going to go to what they are talking about with fitness trackers because you think to yourself, how could a fitness tracker end up being not good for your health? Well, they say that this is an easy way for exercisers to monitor their physical activity. Of course, so the wearable devices like the Fitbit and all that, you can count your steps that you take. Estimate the calories you burn, monitor your heart rate, and track your sleep. And some experts are now saying that they can negatively impact mental health. These critics say fitness trackers users risk becoming unhealthily obsessed with tracking their movements, all for a device that may not provide wholly accurate information. And a lot of them don't. I actually think that these are probably more efficient than say the machine you're running on or the elliptical that you're on at the gym because this is actually tracking stuff on your body where if you're just on a machine at the gym, it's just guesstimating best based on your weight. Some of them do ask for your age, all of that kind of stuff. So they're not always accurate. So you have to remember that. They say approximately 20 million women and 10 million men have a clinically significant eating disorder such as bulimia, neurosa, or anorexia. Uh, obsessively checking fitness trackers can, can contribute to unhealthy attitudes toward eating and fitness. So there is a woman who wrote it for this article about her own attachment to her fitness tracker and how she risked developing an abnormal obsession with it. Uh, She says, um, she goes on to talk about that in a separate article, but yeah, you know, you can't really, it's kind of like being obsessed with the number on the scale, which I am 100% guilty of. I've been doing really good the last couple of days because I I did that little experiment with the mindful eating. Is that what it was called? It wasn't mindful eating. It was um, intuitive eating. Excuse me. And then it's. I'm up like 10 pounds, so the intuitive eating is not working out for me. So I need to lose – I need to get back down to the weight I want to be before I try any of these new experiments. 
So I was doing pretty good, and then, I, you know, I I tried not to be too terribly bad yesterday, uh, but, you know, I had some steak and some potato salad and a little bit of snacks here and there, and, yeah, I put on another pound or two, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to come right back off to water weight. I'm going to flush myself out with water. I've been drinking a lot of water because I just know that it's going to help me to flush out all this crap I've been putting in my body, and I just have to get a better mindset on eating. I have to stop looking at things as bad foods and good foods. This has been a problem my whole life. I have to just do things in better portions. Just if I want something that look, looks good, but I don't think is, you know, like yesterday, I had some cheese, but I didn't have crackers with it. So, you know, there was a choice for me. I had a couple of cashews because I figured that would be better than chips or Doritos. And then along with my little snack of cashews and cheese, I had a couple of strawberries that we had in the fridge. So, you know, that sounded like a pretty, you know, decent snack, right? Right. Got to just make better choices. So they're also saying these juice cleanses that have been around for about 10 years now as a way to diet and detox. Um, They're saying, you know, it's good for weight loss, digestion improvement, and providing extra nutrients. Um, They're saying now, though, it can cause nutritional deficiencies. Well, I don't think that that's a big surprise for any of us. Uh, Other drawbacks were mentioned, like how excessive juice intake may cause even cause weight gain, and that juices don't contain proteins, which help people maintain a healthy weight. You know, they say that juice is not really that great for you, like like orange juice. They're saying have an orange instead, that it's the natural sugar instead of the processed sugar that they add to it. And, you know, think about it. You know, you might have a, a huge glass of orange juice that maybe probably would come out to five or six oranges when you actually put it through a juicer. Would you eat five or six oranges? I don't think so. But yeah, having an orange, excuse me, in the morning, much better than having orange juice. I was an orange juice freak for most of my life. I just stopped drinking orange juice in the morning probably about 10 years ago. I think once I started working out on a regular basis, I kind of put an end to that. But I did. That was the first thing I had every morning. Even before my coffee, I would have a, a, and it was just a small glass, but a glass of orange juice. Now I have a coffee and a huge glass of water. I'm loving the water. It really is making me feel so much better. So on to my blog post. As I was mentioning, there is a funny little picture that I did put up with this blog today. It says me sobbing my heart out, eyes swollen, nose red. I can't see you anymore. I'm not going to let you hurt me like this again. Trainer, it was a sit up. You did one sit up. Funny stuff. I've worked with a couple of trainers over the years, and people really do just complain nonstop, me being one of them. I talk about my friend Angela, who's hooked me up with a fitness routine the last couple of months, and I always tell her how much I hate her. She knows I love her, but there's days that I hate her, and she's like, that's the biggest compliment you can give me. It means I'm doing my job. So she doesn't even mind. So the reason I put this up is because next week, this is just a little preview I'm going to focus on fitness a little bit. I really didn't want to go down this road because, you know, I don't want to be one of those people that tells you that you need to work out, you need to do this, you need to do the other thing. I like to work out because I I like, well, one, I want to look good. Two, I want to feel good. I want to feel strong. And now that I'm getting a little bit older, I want to make sure that my body can handle things that they may it may not have handled you know, may not be able to handle as well as it had in the past. So, but I decided to go ahead and do it a little bit because I had an incident last week that showed me how much we truly take our body for granted and we need to take care of it as well as we possibly can. Here is what happened. I was helping a friend out with some stuff she had to get done and it entailed a lot of heavy bags being lifted. They were filled with like towels and sheets. So, I would pull the bag up from the floor and then pull my shoulder up pretty high in order to give it enough clearance to carry. Well, by the next day, I could barely move my shoulder. 